What's up, y'all? We back at it. All right. This one's going to be called something having to do with boxing fighting styles or boxing fighting techniques or stances, something like that. Anywho, generally speaking, all boxers or pugilists are categorized into four um, defined, uh, I guess, styles of fighting. All right. Now, granted, not everybody fits into one set style. Some are a combination of a few or they have their own unique style. But generally speaking, everybody can kind of somewhat fit into at least one of the four main styles. All right. And these styles are the swarmer, the outboxer, the slugger, and the boxer puncher. All right. Now, many fighters, they change their, their fighting style over time. Sometimes they change their style to their own detriment, and sometimes they change their style to their to their betterment, to their pro, to their progression. And of course, like we just said, there's many fighters who don't necessarily fit into any of these one set styles. Some some use a combination of those styles. Some are so unique, such as Prince Nassim, Roy Jones Jr., Muhammad Ali, etc., etc., that they have their own style their own special flavor that you really can't put a name on it and well, what's amazing and trips me out is you'll have some fighters try to emulate those styles and maneuvers of, of a Nassim or Jones Jr. and those maneuvers are very special and, and magical for those fighters who originally do it no one can emulate Roy Jones Jr. Ali, Nassim etc etc we know the old school term often imitated but never duplicated now you can take many attributes and special tricks from styles such as Nassim Roy Jones but as a whole they're just impossible to copy and their styles are extraordinary and I love watching I love watching those unique styles <laughs> alright let's get into the styles alright the first one that we named the Swarmer so go look at you. the Swarmer y'all the Swarmer alright so let's get into some definitions for the Swarmer Okay, first definition we found. Something such as an insect that swarms. Second definition. One who or that which swarms. Third definition. One of a swarm, same as a swarm spore. AKA the end fighter. The swarmer is the end fighter, the crowder. Um, they apply constant pressure. Not all do, but most have the ability to take a good punch since they're always open to attacks because of their proximity to their opponent and also due to their high volume of punching and being you know all up in the other fighters grills you know if you're going to be all up in the fighters grill throwing punches you got to expect to receive punches now typically the swarmer usually has good stamina and good conditioning all right now swarming you know the swarmer swarms like like we just said like an insect like a like a hive, like ants. Swarming, I repeat, swarming is not a style for longevity. But of course, we have those grand supreme greats such as Henry Armstrong who did it for a long time. All right, the swarmer style favors closing on the inside of your opponent, like we just said. And the main, the main point of attack for the swarmer is to overwhelm, is to overwhelm their opponent with with uh with an intense with with intense flurries um with um with uh a, a multitude of hooks uppercuts just you're, you're swarming them you're trying to hit them head body back neck all around while all while you're in close and they tend to be pretty good on their feet and and they're hard to evade if you don't have good footwork because they're just trying to crowd your space so some good swarmers just off the top of the head you, um but you got Paul Williams, you know, Paul the Punisher Williams. You, you got uh, the late, great, grand supreme, Henry Armstrong, um, uh, Aaron Pryor, Tyson kind of kind of swarms. You know, he's crouching in, all up in your, all up in your grill. Uh, Vitor Belfort, or at least he used to be a swarmer. Uh, you know, uh, Ward, uh, not Andre, Mickey Ward, and so on. All right, now we have the outboxer. The outboxer, box on the outside, outboxing opponent, hit and stay away. Y'all know how we have um, 
the box out maneuver in basketball you box somebody out the paint or you box somebody out from getting a rebound or similar to an is this is similar to an outboxer they keep their opponent at bay they they keep their opponent from being offensive they keep their opponent from executing a game plan um, the outboxer takes certain angles takes exact uh, measurements and maneuvers to outthink and, and to um and to use range and distance um against their opponent you know and, and a lot of times they even outwork their opponent even though it may not look like it but all that foot movement and as uh what was my man from england as he would say call it uh daggone what's his dude name uh boxing beats around as, as he would call it milling you know boxing from the outside sticking the jab moving your feet moving your head um the main premise of the outboxer is they want to create a gap all right they want to create a gap they want to control and create distance or at least a perceived distance okay because like like Ali for example who is an excellent outboxer he could easily close the distance he could easily manipulate the distance the range he could easily close it in the gap he could give illusions of distance with his footwork and his body movement and his body commotion his body twisting and all that stuff and another thing about the house boxer is they tend to be faster and they tend to have real good long-range punches a good jab a good straight across and a lot of them usually have quick feet and hands and they should have good head movement as well too <laughs> now the bad thing about the house boxer is they're usually stuck with the stigma or the stereotype of not being powerful not having any power punches not having KO power which in a lot of cases is very very true but generally speaking let's just say it is true let's just say the average outboxer doesn't have good power so go look at you. now outboxers like the term they box on the outside and they are tactical boxers they're looking for the point wins they'll take a TKO or whatever if they can get it but they're looking for the unanimous decision they're looking for the TKO they're looking to frustrate you. They're looking to to cut your face, cut your eye. Maybe you quit on your stool. They're, they're not really going in there to swarm and, and slug it out with you and last man standing. They're tactical. They're thinking. They're outboxing you. Hence the term outboxer. All right? And they're real good at wearing down opponents. I will say that. Like, uh, for instance, like uh, how, what's the man name from Cuba? Uh, like like how Laura did Angulo, just warmed down, busted his or orbital bone over his eye socket. Now don't let the term fool you. Now some outboxers can knock your ass out too. All right, like how Laura did Angulo, like we just said. And some of the great outboxers in history, we have uh, Ali, Larry Holmes, uh, Eris Landy Laura, who we just, who we just spoke of, uh, Gene Tunney, um, Sugar Ray Robinson. Well. Well, he fits into a few other categories, in my opinion. But don't sleep on an outboxer just because they rely on footwork and jabs and straights. They can still put you down and possibly put you out. And in and, and other instances, the outboxer is sometimes called the pure boxer, the quote-unquote pure boxer. All right, in closing, the outboxer wants to outbox you. All right, the next style, who we have, who we have? We got the slugger, okay, a.k.a. the brawler. Now, some definitions for the slugger are, one, a person who strikes hard, especially a boxer noted for the ability to deliver hard punches. Definition number two, baseball, a player who frequently gets extra base hits, a strong hitter. Definition number three, one who hits with his fists. All right, I went a little extra. Um, here's some synonyms for, um, for slugger. Wildcat. Scrapper, battler. Now you see a lot of the old school uh, fighters with the with that term in front of their name, battling. You know, battling Nelson, battling Levinsky, and all them. What other synonyms? You see, battler, brawler, gladiator, warrior, warlord, and a whole host of things. Now the slugger, typically and stereotypically, is you know he's that rugged, rough. Lacking in skill, wild, unruly, barroom, brawl, back alley, you don't want to see them type of fighter. And they tend to have power. They tend to have grit. 
They tend to have piss in their veins, as my old coach would say. And and they're really they have a fan friendly style. People love to see these dudes fight. And they usually possess the ability to knock a mother flusher out with a punch or two. Now, now on the flip side, the slugger, aka the brawler, they tend to lack uh I don't want to say in skill, but they tend to lack grace. You understand what I'm saying? They're not going to work the ring like a technician, like the outboxer. They're going to go in there, stomp, romp, you know, fromp around and do their best to knock your head into the fifth row. All right. Now, all the grace some sluggers may lack, they make up for it in, in raw power. And they're often able to knock out most of their opponents, possibly with a single punch or or headbutt that that's another thing that goes along with the slugger slash brawler they kind of have a uh you know another stigma attached to them for being a little rough and let's just call it what it is being dirty and using cheap tactics you know headbutts and low blows and rapid punches and you know stepping behind the raft and then haymakers and you know doing all type of silly stuff well not silly it's tactical but it's unfair to an extent i really don't know how i feel about I gotta say kidney punches and stuff. You know what? These dudes are professional. They have careers. It's unfair, but but being in that ring or being in us in a setting where at the end of the day it's really a fight, some of those maneuvers I feel like you should use. I mean, you should be tactical in the way you use them. Like Chavez, he used to use the low blow. Like Danny Garcia, he's real good at using the low blow. You know, you got B Hop. He uses certain maneuvers that may not be looked upon as the most fair, but just one little thing like a low blow man you put something in, in your opponent's mind something they have to think about something that they might be looking for something that might anger them to make them rush you or be aggressive to where it's easy for you to counter them you see this is chess not checkers now granted i'm not i don't roll with nobody that's no cheater or no someone that's gonna uh you know try to kill someone or take away someone's career but there is a time and a place for so-called dirty tactics. All right, what's what's the advantage of the brawler or the slugger? The unpredictability. The brawler slash slugger is unpredictable. Um, they tend to take a lot of punishment, and they can give out just as much or more than what they can take. Now, on the negative end, again, they're a little bit slower than other styles of boxers. The slugger slash brawler is usually the dude that's looking for the fight. He's usually the dude that's following you. He's a, he's aggressively pursuing you. And if you don't know how to cut off the ring, that could be dangerous for him. But that's the bad thing about it. They're, they're usually a little slow and they're usually trying to pursue you. And another thing, from my observation, they telegraph their punches a lot. But since many brawlers are wild and instinctive type of fighters, to the untrained eye, they're difficult to counter. And I was about to say that they're easy to counter uh, from the, uh, they're easy to be countered by a skilled boxer, but hell, even to the skilled boxer, they're difficult to counter because, because of their unique brawling style, because of their harsh, because of their wild attack, i.e. you have the Mayweather Madonna fight, the first fight. I mean, Mayweather's a defensive wizard, buddy. I mean, it's just hard for him to counter them wild Shoot straight up in the air, come straight down, punches that might. It was crazy, man, the way he was connecting with them. I mean, he's a brawler. My Don is a brawler. Mayweather, defensive wizard, Splack Al. <laughs> he said Sweet Pea versus Chavez. Even though Chavez must have low blow the dude about seven damn times, I actually think Whitaker won the fight. But anywho, the slugger slash brawler, this is another style that's not fit for longevity. I.e., you can't do it for too long because. It will most definitely cut your career short. That's why the great George Foreman, in his older age, he changed from, remember, as a youth, you know, in his 20s and 30s or whenever, when he was fighting Ali and Frazier and all them, he was a slugger. He was a brawler slugger. But when he came back to boxing, the older, more plump, bald-headed, you know, Foreman grill, Foreman, he was a more patient boxer puncher. You know, you can't go in there with that age and with that wisdom and be trying to slug it out with them young guns. I mean, he probably would have, shoot. I, I tell you what, I don't think he would have won the title at his age if he would have kept a slugger style. 
but the point here is slugger is not meant for you to carry on your whole career it's just it's an exciting style it's cool to watch and it's, it's suitable for young powerful men let's see who's some famous sluggers we got Sonny Liston you know you got Dempsey you got your boy <laughs> this dude is a real life real life Rocky fighter Arturo Gotti you got Bob Fitzsimmons and the list goes on so look at you. next style y'all the next style the boxer puncher now the boxer puncher possesses many qualities of all the other styles he can outbox he has hand speed he has a decent jab. He can punch in combinations. He can swarm if he has to, like the swarmer. He can be accurate. He has good or at least decent footwork. The, the boxer puncher, in my opinion, is sort of like the jack of all trades. But most importantly, the boxer puncher, just the most important thing about the boxer puncher is they have KO power. He can punch hard and punch you out. The term... Like all these other terms we're going through, it's self-explanatory. The boxer puncher can box, which means they can be technical and they could they they can punch, you know, with with tact and skill. And then the second part of the boxer puncher is punch. They can punch, meaning they could put a hurting on you. So we have boxer puncher. Splag out. They can box and they can punch. And when I think of boxer punches, I think of the great, pure, supreme boxer, Sugar Ray Robinson. Uh, let's see, some dudes that are more recent. I think of uh, Lucas Matisse and Keith Thurman. And of course, there are many more. And in history, we have, um, we got uh, Arguello and um, Hagler, Holyfield, Freddie Steele, Sugar Ray Leonard, Jose Napoles, Sandy Sadler. I love Sandy Sadler. Carlos Zarate. You know, who else we got on here? We got uh, Felix Trinidad. The list goes on. All right, the next style or stance. Let's see, we have the counter puncher. The counter puncher. All right, y'all. Now, a counter puncher, again, self explanatory. He waits and he looks for counters. Another word for counter, y'all, just in case you're unfamiliar is a uh, reversal okay is um counter means to be against um anti to to impede all right so we, we should all know this so the counter puncher waits he moves he, he's he's milling as beats would say and he's trying to lure the opponent to make a bad step okay he, he's boxing he's doing his thing but really he's trying to he's trying to make you throw off beat he's trying to make you make a mistake trying to make you make a mistake so he could bang you with a shot so he can knock you out hit you with a hard strike and, and the old heads used to say that I'm, I'm sure y'all heard it and if you have it here we go the old heads used to say that it's the punch you don't see that hurts the most and in many cases that punch is a counter punch and good counter punchers such as Juan Ma Marquez Anderson Silva they, they can get their opponents to follow them. They can get their opponents to be overly aggressive and to chase them. They can make their opponents, they can even lull their opponents to sleep. You know, a good counter puncher, after you get countered a few times, shoot, that takes away some of your offense because now you're thinking like, dang, if I throw this, it's going to counter. If I throw that, uh, so a good counter puncher, you know, can debilitate you, man. But, you know, these guys are professionals. They they know to keep going. They know how to adjust or should know how to adjust. But like we said earlier, man, it's chest, not check. <laughs> Who else we have? We have Floyd Mayweather Jr. He, he's great at that. Floyd Mayweather Jr. is excellent at taking people out of their game plan. All right? He's excellent for doing that. And, he's, you know, he's an excellent counter puncher. So he's, he's waiting on you to make a mistake. And he's, bam, right there waiting to capitalize as soon as you make a mistake. The counter puncher, their defense is their offense. And... If y'all ever sparred or fought or boxed or whatever you do, MMA, whatever type of fighting or combat, it seems as, as if the counter puncher is not even really throwing with full force. You know, you know what I'm saying? It seems like they're, they're not throwing with their full intent. They're simply kind of petting or throwing or fainting at you to set a trap for you. 
they're throwing a punch to get you to throw a punch which will set up the punch that they wanted to throw all along you see what I'm saying which is a quick hard decisive counter punch so they're fainting the pawn they're throwing half-hearted hooks and jabs just so you can throw a punch just so they can get the punch they really wanted wow that that counter left dig to your rib that counter right over the top that they're really just throwing so they can counter you and that's you know hey that's, that's that's a part of the style that's a part of the trick that's a part of the that's a part of the game and the counter puncher is very crafty but he has to be quick and he has to be somewhat reflexive um who are some of the great counter punchers in history we got charlie burley um b hop well, that, that dude, he'd be out still fighting. He's living history. Um, Archie Moore, um, either either Benitez or Gomez. I don't know why I always mix them two up. Um, who else is a great counter puncher, man? James Tony, and, and there's also great modern day counter punchers as well too. Rigandow, and we already said Mayweather, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> right, another stance or fighting style <clears throat> is the Southpaw. Now, the southpaw is a boxer who fights with his right hand in front. His right hand is his leading, leading hand. And his left hand and left leg are behind him. Or to the south, as they say. Now, northpaw used to be a term that they used to, that they used, to use. And that meant a right-handed boxer. But really, northpaw was really more um, accustomed to baseball pitchers. But anywho, northpaw means right-handed. Now, there's a few stories... Of where Southpaw originates, or where Southpaw originates from, the term Southpaw. Now in baseball, they say that the pitcher faces the West and he throws from the South, using his southern part of the body when he's left-handed. Now well, that's one story where they say Southpaw comes from it comes from pitching, and if a left-handed pitcher comes up, he's throwing from the South of the stadium, the South of his leg, because he's facing the West. Okay. And in the movie Rocky, uh, there's a scene where Rocky Balboa, he's talking to Adrian, and he explains to her um, how the term uh, Southpaw originated. And go back and watch it, y'all. There's a scene in the first Rocky where Rocky, he takes Adrian to a skating rink, and he had to pay the little dude some money to ice skate after hours. And he's talking, and he's trying to, you know, war and everything. Anywho, he tells Adrian... The story of how the term Southpaw came is about. He's talking to him. And he says, yeah, Adrian, there's a dude from Philadelphia. And he, he got into a fight and his arm was on. He, and he was left-handed, you know. His arm was behind him. And his arm was facing toward New Jersey. And if you go and look at the map, half of the state of New Jersey is south of Philly. You know, there's about a half of the state is, you know, uh, on, the same, uh, on the same level. Like, you know, strictly to the east. And there's the other half of the state of New Jersey is um, south or southeast to Philadelphia. But anyway, <clears throat> Rocky goes to tell her that the dude from Philly was left-handed and his, and his left arm was, was facing the south, south of Jersey. Okay? And he said that's how the term Southpaw came about. South Jersey... South Camden, South Paul. And I can't remember verbatim word for what he said, but go back and watch that scene. He explains to her how that turn came about for boxing. Sucker, you ain't nothing. Who are some naturally left handed South Paul fighters? Okay. Um, man, there's a lot. There's a lot of great South Paul fighters in history. But um, let's, let's talk about a few of the ones that are South Paul who can switch their stance, such as Marvin Hagler or De La Hoya or Koto. Boxers who are southpaw, who are naturally southpaw, who are left-hand dominant, but they fight orthodox, or they can switch hit, like like a good baseball batter. They can switch hit, and they do this for as a um, as a gameplay, as a strategy to confuse their opponents, to to give their opponents bad angles, different angles, to get themselves an advantage if a if an opponent isn't used to doing that. Who else can switch hit? Man, there's a lot of fighters who can do that. Terence Crawford is good at it. Roy Jones Jr. used to do it. But all right, let's let's name some famous Southpaws. You got um Prince Nassim, Zab Judah, um Pac-Man, Manny Pacquiao, Marvin Hagler, Sergio Martinez, <laughs> Rocky Balboa, even though he's a fictional character, uh Cotto, like we just named, Adonis Stevenson, Freddie Miller, 
Edwin Valero, Eris Lindy Lord, the list goes on and on and on. All right. Now, last but not least, for categories of fighters, I guess fighting styles, what well, we had Slugger, aka Brawler, we had the Out, the Outboxer, we had the Swarmer, and then we had, um, uh, dang, we had the Counter Puncher, we had the Southpaw Fighter, um, and then we had the, um, uh, the boxer, the boxer puncher. Exactly. Okay, that's good. Now, there's another category because all sort of fighters can be like this category we're about to name. It's not really a category, even though it should, because we use this term for a lot of fighters. But it's the slick, the slick fighter. You know. So let's define slick right quick. The word is called the slick style or the slick technique or whatever. All right, now, according to some dictionaries, slick can be used as an adjective, verb, or noun for those of you who are uh, literary experts. All right, the dictionary results for the word slick. All right, definition one, done or operating in an impressively smooth, efficient, and apparently effortless way. Definition number two, smooth and glossy. Definition number three, to make wet or slippery. Definition number four, to make someone or something smart tidy or stylish now here's some um, synonyms for the um, term slick for the word slick efficient smooth polished well organized shiny glossy sleek oiled slippery wet greasy cool awesome original stylish sly sneaky clever sleek now the slick fighter, y'all, the slick, the slick pugilist, the sick boxer, they can slip. Um, they, they're deceptive. They, they, they're effective. They're unique. They're hard to hit. They're tactical. They can adjust. They have all the good qualities of of an outboxer, of a of a defensive boxer, of a um, of a counter puncher. Um, they have they have many different qualities of, of all these styles. Point Blake. You really can't describe it, but that's why we use this term. They're a combination of all things, so that's why we call the ass slick. You feel me? All right. Side note, y'all. Side note. All the styles we just named, you know, that we just that we just a four mentioned. Each boxing style has you already know this has its advantages and disadvantages to each other style. You see what I'm saying? So the swarmer has advantages to the to the to the outboxer the, the 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 boxer puncher has advantages over the slugger you know what I'm saying the counter puncher has advantages over the swarmer you see what I'm saying hence the term quote unquote styles make fights and we've all heard this term all fighters have their own variations of of set in stone or standardized styles. All right, so if you give someone, if you teach someone the orthodox outboxer style, they're going to have their own special, unique variation that's special and unique to them. And only they're going to be able to use that style, use that particular style, which a lot of other boxers have already used that way because anything you show somebody, you know, they just freak it to how they, you know, it's, just, it's an expression of themselves. Kind of like what a... With Bruce Lee, with the uh, you know, with the JKD, G Kundo. So let's get into a few other um, unique stylistic stances and positions that fighters use and make special to them. First, we got the peekaboo, the peekaboo style. The peekaboo style or stance is a bobbing, weaving, um, surprising, explosive type of style. Um, the name and style is just like that. You know that little silly game you play with babies, peekaboo. You know, with, with your, you know, with your chaps or whatever, the fighter in a peekaboo stance is usually crouched, hands covering their face, um, side to side movements, um, head movement, uh, you know, good footwork. And legend has it that the legendary trainer Cus D'Amato created the peekaboo stance slash style. I don't know. I really didn't look into that. I'd have to look into that. But um, the peekaboo style. Peekaboo stance, baby. Again, it utilizes side-to-side -side head movements, bobbing, weaving, surprise attacks, rapid combos. You know, you see Mike Tyson with the peekaboo, head, head, body, 
body, head, body, 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 head. The style is explosive. It, the offense is very surprising. Um, the defense is quick. You're dodging, you're ducking. Um, it, it's a peaking defense, and, and it's a peaking attack style. You're coming out the peak, and you right back into your stance. Here's the term peekaboo. Now, this style, like, like, um, <clears throat> This style, sort of like a skilled outboxer, um, the, 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 the pugilists using this style can quickly close the distance. They, they can quickly close a gap and get to your ass and, and get the welling on you. This style and the good outboxers are good at doing that. And the peekaboo style is actually built for that, to close the distance and to get to you quickly because the typically... Um, shorter fighters, more stout fighters kind of use this peekaboo type of style. Um, I'm trying to think. Hey, you out, sucker. Um, Iron Mike Tyson, uh, Floyd Patterson, uh, Joe Frazier did a little bit of peekaboo. He was always rising up with that left hook, you know, coming out of that little crouch and rising up with his hooks and uppercuts and stuff. Who, who else used the peekaboo? Bobo Olsen. And there's other famous fighters who, you know, use the peekaboo style. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go over one more style <clears throat> or and or pugilist fight technique. And this one will segue to the next video um, that we're researching and, you know, putting together about boxing tricks and techniques. All right. So the last style here, last but definitely not least, we all see it. Everybody's trying to copy it. They're getting their head whooped and pot shot at pot knots on their forehead is the shoulder roll, also called a.k.a. the crab or the crab guard or at one time it was called the Michigan defense uh, and I'm sure there's many other names such as the Philly shell you know Philadelphia must have got their hands on it tweaked it a bit and so that's why we have the famous Philly shell alright so the crab aka the shell aka or the shoulder roll really is a variation of what they call the cross arm defense okay the shoulder roll aka Philly Shell is an old defensive technique y'all it's old it didn't come with uh, Mayweather it didn't come with Whitaker it didn't come with Tony it didn't come with B-Hop it, it's a it's a it's a old it's an old technique but you gotta be very skilled to use it alright so basically if you haven't seen it basically the shoulder roll of Philly Shell you're using your shoulders to deflect punches and you're using one of your arms to guard your face and the other arm is guarding your body. You're using your shoulders, you're using your your, your waist and your hips to turn, and you're, using your, you're using your feet to get in and out of position. You're able to counter, you're able to catch, you're able to parry, you're able to block, you're able to do a lot. You're able to expend your opponent's energy. It's a very slick style, man. It's a very, see, there we go. We, we use a slick to describe someone who's using the Philly shell. <laughs> Now the Philly shell saves you energy, y'all. It saves a lot of energy. It allows you to deflect, like we just said, to deflect, block, parry, slip punches. And since um, a lot of it is based on upper body, you know, twisting and turning upper body movement and arm movement, uh, a skilled artist of the shell or the crab with a shorter roll can have their feet stationary. That means their feet are playing, they don't have to move their feet. And they can still save a lot of energy and dodge their punches and, and be in position to counter you. <laughs> Hence, the shoulder roll, if you're skilled at it, saves you a lot of energy. Also, the shoulder roll, a.k.a. Crab, a.k.a. Michigan Defense, is a good counterpunching. Um, it's a good counterpunching um, technique or style. Every time you make your opponent miss by using your shoulder... Or, or, or rolling with a punch or slipping a punch or letting it, you know, deflect off you. You're always in position to counter. So the shell or, or the shoulder roll, it, it's, it, it puts you in a good position to, to easily transition from defense to offense. Another good thing about the shoulder roll, a.k.a. Crab, a.k.a. Philly Shell, is it's very difficult to penetrate. The shoulder roll, it frustrates opponents because it makes it hard for them to connect clean or it makes them hard for them to even connect at all alright so again the shoulder and, and you got a shoulder in your arm that, that's guarding the upper body 
while one arm and, and a twisting slash uh, turning maneuver guards the body. You know what I'm saying? You got your arm close right here on your belly going around your waist and you got the other arm looking like you're making an L. Well, see, that's, it depends on the fighter. It might look like an L. It might look like a, like a, like a half triangle. Some people have slant their arm, their, their, their top arm. Y'all know what the hell we're saying. But you want to keep that shell tight, baby. Keep the, keep the sword of roll. Keep the crab defense tight, baby. Keep your shit tight like you Ronald Winky Wright. You know, who else is good at the cell slash sort of roll slash crab techniques? You got um, you got James Tony, you got Sweet P. Pernell Whitaker, Walcott, uh, Floyd Mayweather Sr. and Jr. <clears throat> oh, and Roy Jones Jr. He had a very unique and reflexive, you know, instinctive type of cell as well too. What else is good about the cell? Uh, rotation, y'all. Rotation, rotation, and rotating is good for rolling and deflecting punches and slipping them and creating openings for you to strike. Parry, baby. Parry. And by the way, to avoid injury to your little hands, you really only want to parry if you win the cell or using a soda roll. Or even if you win the orthodox or whatever stance you use, you could do. You really only want to parry jabs and straight punches, crosses, things like that, a straight, a cross, a jab. Because if you're trying to parry hooks and uppercuts, not only will it be difficult, but it, it, will, it will produce damage on your hands and wrists. You could possibly break your hands and wrists. Because if you're trying to parry powerful punches, usually they, you're not going to be able to parry them because those powerful punches are going to easily penetrate through that one hand wrist form whatever you're using okay so get your hand power up get your hand speed up get your hand resiliency up all in all the soda roll aka crab defense aka philly shells a crafty and very difficult defense and in my honest opinion to me it's the slickest defense out there it's very slick and your skill must be very high to be able to use this defense this style these maneuvers effectively all right y'all so that was a little spit on um some of the boxing styles and maneuvers just off the top of the head you had the swarmer the outboxer the the slugger aka brawler the um the boxer puncher the counter puncher the um uh, the slick fighter which can fall into a number of categories depending on the skill of the fighter um uh, what else y'all we'll go back and listen y'all we, we, we already say it's been a long day long night this is going to segue into the next video about tricks and methods of the boxer and a little bit of history in the next video so our, uh, we appreciate your time tell us what you think that blasted we love boss <laughs> hey, you out sucker